हेलो एवरीवन आप सभी का फिर से एक बार स्वागत है मेरे यूट्यूब चैनल में जिसका नाम है कॉमर्स ट्रेजर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस के यू डी एम कॉम फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर सिक्योरिटी एनालिसिस एंड पोर्टफोलियो मैनेजमेंट 2019 क्वेश्चन पेपर टू मार्क्स क्वेश्चंस आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड वीडियो ऑन टू पेपर इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन दोज वीडियो आई एम पुटिंग द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एज वेल एज इन आई बटन डू वॉच दोज वीडियोज एंड विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच टाइम लेट इज गो टू दिस पेपर द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज स्टेट हाउ टैक्सेशन कैन बी मोटिव फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट सो एज वी नो पीपल इन्वेस्ट बिकॉज ऑफ डिफरेंट मोटिव आउट ऑफ विच टैक्सेशन इज ऑल्सो अ मोटिव ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट सो टैक्स इज अनबल एंड सर्टन इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफर्स टैक्स इंसेंटिव एंड हेल्प टू ब्रिंग डाउन अवर टैक्स लाइबिलिटी सो इफ वी इन्वेस्ट अवर टैक्स लाइबिलिटी इज गोइंग टू बी रेड्यूज एंड देर बाई वी कैन सेव सम अमाउंट ऑफ टैक्स देर फॉर इट बिकम्स अ मोटिव फॉर इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड इन्वेस्टर कैन गेट tax deductions on housing loan and its interest so you get deduction under income from house property and under atc you get deduction on repayment of loan then you get again deductions under section atc regarding to investment up to 150000 rupees where you can invest in fixed deposits in mutual funds and other schemes of government etc deduction of rupees 10000 is also paid on attta if you invest in saving bank account and other deductions like atccg for equity savings atee atd for mediclaim and attdb for mediclaim policy of dependent also act as an motive for investment the next question is what are zero coupon bonds a zero coupon bond also known as accrual bond is a type of debt security that does not pay any interest but instead these bonds are issued at deep discount and they are redeemed for its full face value or at par on maturity so zero coupon bonds in simple are bonds which have zero interest rate then what is the use of investing in these type of bonds so these bonds are issued at discount for example let us assume that the bond is of rupees 100 so the company is going to issue it at rupees 95 and on maturity they are going to pay you how much rupees 100 so this 5 rupees what you are getting that is nothing but the return for investment on such type of bonds so one more definition zero coupon bonds are bonds with no coupons that do not pay interest and are sold at large discount from their face value so always they are sold at discount and then they are redeemed they are repaid at par or face value The next question is differentiate price weighted and equal value weighted stock indices. So stock indices can be computed in three ways. One using price weighted index, second using value weighted index and third using equal value weighted index. So let us see the difference between price and equal value weighted index. So price weighted index is an index reflecting the sum of prices of the sample stock on a certain day or date in relation to the base day or date so here we need to compare the sum of the prices on a specific day in relation to the base day so the formula to compute price weighted index is sum of the prices at the end of the year divided by sum of the prices in the beginning of the year into 100 and here the main assumption is that the investor has to hold one share in all the companies which are included in the index so very simple whatever the shares list are given you have to just add the prices of the share in the beginning of the year in the end of the year and then you have to compare that you are going to get the price weighted index equal weighted index is an index reflecting the simple arithmetic average of price relatives of the sample stock on a certain date in relation to the base date so equal weighted index is sum of the price relatives at the end divided by sum of price relatives at the beginning into 100 and here the main assumption is investor needs to invest equal amount of money in all the stocks in the index so what is this price relative price relative is nothing but the current tier price or current price divided by base price so just you need to find out the price relative add all the price relative at the end add all the price relative in the beginning and then multiply it by 100 so you are going to get equal weighted index now let us also see what is value weighted index 
Value weighted index is an index reflecting the aggregate market capitalization of the sample stock on a certain date in relation to the base date. So here what we do, we find out the sum of market capitalization at the end of the year divided by sum of market capitalization in the beginning of the year into 100. Now what is this market capitalization? Market capitalization is nothing but what is the price of that stock into how much stock has been traded, how much is the volume of the trade. Value weighted index is nothing but sum of market capitalization at the end divided by sum of market capitalization in the beginning into 100. And here the main assumption is investor has to hold stock of the company in the same proportion as they are in the market index. So these are the meaning of three types of index, how you calculate them and what are the main assumptions. The next question is what is minimum variance portfolio? Now minimum variance portfolio is an investing method that helps to maximize the returns and minimize the risk. So in simple sentence, minimum variance portfolio is nothing but it is the combination of securities at which your risk is going to be least. This is what is given in the second definition. It is a situation where portfolio risk is lower. It is a combination of security which results in the least risk. So if you mix two different types of securities, at what point you get the least risk, the lowest risk? That is what is called as minimum variance portfolio. So it is calculated using the following formula. So if your correlation is plus one or minus one, then the formula for finding out the proportion of securities is weight of X is going to be SD of Y divided by SD of X plus SD of Y. And weight of Y in this case is one minus weight of X. So you have to find out the value of weight of X and weight of Y and then find out the standard deviation that is going to be the minimum variance portfolio. Now in case if the correlation is any other thing apart from plus one and minus one, that is it may be zero or any other value, then the formula to compute weight of X is going to be variance of Y minus covariance of XY divided by variance of X square, variance of Y square minus two into covariance of X and Y. So weight of X is how you have to compute in this way and weight of Y, it is same as we computed in the first case. So remember the formulas and definition of this minimum variance portfolio. The next question is, what is efficient frontier? Why is it convex to the origin? An efficient frontier is a line representing all the efficient portfolio plotted on a risk return graph. So whenever you plot all the efficient portfolios on a risk return graph, then it is called as an efficient frontier. So it is a set of optimum portfolios that offers highest returns for the given level of risk or lowest risk for the given level of returns. So it is nothing but it is a line which consists of the efficient portfolios which are plotted on that. Then why it is convex to the origin? The efficient frontier is convex towards the excess of expected return as all the assets have correlation between positive unity and negative unity that is plus one and minus one. And because of this, it is convex to the origin. The next question is state the meaning of single factor model. The single factor model is a simplest form of return estimation models where only one factor is considered. So these models are used to find out the expected return. So whenever you are using only one factor to find out the returns of a security, then it is called as a single factor model. The best example for single factor model is your CAPM model, which makes use of only one factor that is beta, which is the market return volatility. The most common implementation of single factor model is CAPM model or capital asset pricing model, as I said, where single factor is beta or the volatility of the securities return to the market returns. This model was suggested by William Sharpe. The next question is give the meaning and distinguish security market line and capital market line. So security market line is one which decomposes all the stocks in a straight line and capital market line is a line which decomposes a stock into risky and risk-free returns. So let us see the 
difference between these two lines. The measure of risk used in CML is standard deviation, whereas the measure of risk used in SML is beta. So this is the first difference. Second is in CML only efficient portfolios are on the line, whereas in SML all the stocks must be on the line as I discussed in the meaning. The third one is in CML returns cannot be negative as ST cannot be negative. So always the standard deviation is a positive value. So therefore returns cannot be negative. But in SML as beta can take negative value, the returns may be negative or it may be positive depending upon the beta value. The fourth difference is CML is applicable to portfolios whereas SML is applicable to individual securities. And last difference is in CML both systematic and unsystematic risk are considered whereas in SML only systematic risk will be considered. So these are the differences which have been asked frequently in your exams. The next question is what is portfolio beta? How is it computed? So portfolio beta is a measure of overall systematic risk of a portfolio of investments. It equals to the weighted average of beta coefficient of all the individual stocks in a portfolio. So very simple, your portfolio beta is nothing but it is the beta of the portfolio in which you have invested using different securities. So it is computed using the formula beta of the portfolio is equal to summation of i is equal to 1 to n x i that is weights of that stock into beta of that particular stock. For example, let us assume there are four securities in which you have invested equally. So the weights are going to be 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 for the four securities. And let us assume that the beta for first one is 0 0.5, for second one it is 1, then for third one it is 1.5 and fourth one it is 2. Then how do you compute the beta? Beta is computed in this particular format that is weight of the first one that is 0 0.25 into beta of first one which is 0 0.5 plus weight of second 0 0.25 beta of second 1 weight of third 0 0.25 beta of third 1.5 and weight of the fourth stock 0 0.25 into and beta of the fourth stock that is 2 and when you compute this and add whatever you get that becomes the beta of the portfolio give the meaning of arbitrage pricing line. The arbitrage pricing theory is a model used to estimate the fair market value of financial asset on the assumption that an asset expected returns can be forecasted based on its linear pattern or relationship to several macroeconomic factors that determine the risk of the specific asset. So this was developed by Stephen Ross. Now what it means See, arbitrage pricing model or arbitrage pricing line is a theory which make use of multiple factors. In CAPM model, we make use of only one factor that is beta. Here in APT model, we make use of multiple factors or we make use of multi-factor model which makes use of different economic factors like GDP, inflation, oil price rises, etc. And then we compute the expected returns. Then the last question of this paper was what is meant by Jensen's alpha? Now Jensen's alpha or Jensen's measure is a risk adjusted performance measure that represents the average return on a portfolio or investment over and above that predicted by the CAPM model given the portfolios or investment beta and average market return. So what it means, it means that it is the return which is over and above the return which you expect and compute as per the CAPM model. So how can you compute this? Jensen's alpha can be computed using the formula expected return of the portfolio which is the overall expected return minus the CAPM model return. So how do you compute CAPM model return? So therefore the formula is going to be expected return of the portfolio minus RF plus RM minus RF into beta. So if you compute this, whatever you get is called as Jensen's alpha, where RF stands for risk free rate of return, RM stands for market rate of return and beta is nothing but the risk of the stock.
stock so this is all about today's video if you like the video please hit a like button and if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please subscribe my channel and also share this video with your friends thank you for watching this video and let us meet again with another video